Hey guys, it's Brian with FishingHype.com, Fish and Hype Guide Service, and we are out here on Lake Barkley, and we are going to do some white bass fishing today, and hopefully I can give you some tips on what to look for, and what to catch them on, and all that good stuff. Um, right now we're just idling around some of these breaks, and what we're looking for is, on the map, finding the river channel where it swings in against a bank. Usually the outside corner of a bank is usually your best on, on a corner. Um, some of the straightaways on a river channel can be good if it's got a little finger or a cut or something in it that those fish can kind of use as structure to get on. If it's just a straight bank, just under, on, on, you know, your, your normal river channel, most of the time not going to be a lot of fish on it unless somebody's placed brush or, you know, rock pile or something on it here and there. But <clears throat> there are other places along them that are going to have where an old ditch came in, um, or maybe where it was softer bottom and the river's kind of eroded it away over time and you've got a, you've got a point down there now or a, a little dish or a hump or something on it. But So that's kind of what we're doing now is just idling some of these little points and corners and, and what have you along the main river channel to see what we can find for uh, some schools of fish. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around here for a second and I'll, I'll let you look at what I've been trying to look at on the side and down, and, and down imaging. As you can see on here, a little group of fish down here. And right now what we're fishing, and you can see it on the GPS, here's just a straightaway. River flow is going this direction. Um, I'm going, I'm going with, or sorry, the river's coming this way. I'm going with the current right now. I'm gonna spin the boat around and come back up. And this point right here has been a good point. It's had a lot of fish. And what it does in here, it actually makes a little turn like that where the rivers had cut through here. So it's made this point and that current runs up on that point. And that stacks the bait fish on a point like that. So that is something we've been keying on. And I'll take you over it as we turn here. And uh, we'll look at the side and, the side and down imaging over here and I'll show you what it looks like on there with the bait fish and, and what the white bass and stripes and stuff look like down there. So we're just going back up this side of the river channel here. And generally the steeper the break, the better for the, for the white bass and the stripes and yellows and stuff. They seem to like that real steep break. Um, <clears throat> and they don't tend to like it real shallow on top. I mean, eight, maybe 10 foot and then having it break off. Right now I'm staying in about that 15 foot range. It's shallower yet up to my left. It's shallower this way. We're deeper off to the right. <clears throat> and I'll show you as we get up here, we're getting fairly close to where that point will be. And you can start seeing some stuff on the bottom here. Those aren't fish. I can tell by the shadows they're, they're still stuck down on the bottom. There's a bunch of stumps along here in, in one area and there is some rock. You start seeing more of these diagonal lines like this, that's going to be more of your... That's looking more like fish there. we got some debris on the bottom. Now I'm a little bit more up on top of this flat. And it should start breaking off as we break off the tip of it. And those three bigger fish off to the side here. And here you can see these are all stripes and whites. All stacked down. This is what it looks like on the down imaging. Here they're all stacked down along the side there. And they're right, just as it starts breaking off. And now it's gonna flatten out. Now we're kinda into the, we're into the gully of it. And what it does, I'll show you over here again. We kinda got this gully right there here is where we're at now. And then it's gonna break back up on this other point. And so we broke down to the bottom of it. Now it's coming up on that other point there. And this would be considered, we're coming up on the down current side of the point where all the fish were here is the currents blowing into them like that. So I'm going to spin around. There's not a, definitely not as many fish up on, there's a little group of them there, not as many fish on that down current point as there are fish that were sitting on that cur on that point facing into the current. So we're gonna go back here. 
we'll make one more idle over it and then we'll uh, try to get ourselves positioned right where we can set up and make some casts on those fish. And I actually like fishing into the current when you have current, that way you can cast up, up the current and then bring that bait back to you. And uh, it looks like a natural presentation, you know, as, as a bait fish, an injured bait fish is being pushed around with the current, it's going with the current, not against it. So now we broke off that that little point down in the trough and now we're coming up on the, that point that had all the the fish on it. You can see some tucked really tight down to the bottom right there. You got a bunch suspended. So I'm gonna get us turned around here and we'll get set up and we'll see if we can catch some. Sometimes it doesn't have, it, like I said, it doesn't have as much action. Bait feels messed up, yep. Again, I could tell that bait felt messed up and it just it just got wrapped around that back line there. See some fish down here on the bottom. I'm gonna vertical jig this for a second. Um, and the uh, rooster tail is kind of an in-between bait, you know, like I say, I've, 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 I've caught multi-species off from it too, but generally, um, most of my multi-species bites will all come off this blade bait. It's something so easy for any family to come out and do. Um, you can vertical jig it right over the side. I mean, I can watch my graph right here and I can, I, I can tell when I'm on top of some fish and you can just vertical jig it over the side. It doesn't take much to cast them out. And just you're just picking it up, up, up and down off the bottom. Um, I get a lot of trips that people have never really ever, hardly ever been fishing at all. And we can go out and I can find a little school of these and you just tell them drop it over till you get slack a line that's on the bottom and just start pulling it up and down, yo-yoing it up and down. And I mean, they, they don't have to feel like for a worm or whatever if they've got a bite or not. You'll know when you get bit by one, on one of these just as, I mean, they, they hit it usually pretty hard and the bait does all the action. I mean, you're moving it with the rod, but the bait itself has got enough action built into it as doing its own thing. So far, by the looks of the graph, seems like about that 16 to 18 foot range is where they're at today. Just right on that break of breaking in off the flat. We got some extra water in the lakes right now, so the flats are a little deeper than they normally would be right now. But instead of being up 14, 15 on top, they just they're right, kind of right on that lip, which is kind of actually fairly normal. If they're really feeding and got the fish, the bait fish pushed up, oh, dang it. Um, They'll get right up on top of the flat, but generally they're right. They're right on the edge. That's where the bait fish are trying to hang out. Is they're they're right on the edge of that. They don't want to be out in the real deep water, but they've got. Uh, they can get up on the flat if they want to go feed, but they got the deeper water for security. There's one. Doesn't feel very big. Nope, came off. It's not a bad idea on some of these spots, especially depending on how much current you have in the lake to uh, throw yourself a marker out because it may not look like today I can't really see the current but if I get off the trolling motor I definitely drift backwards Oop, there's a fish. I definitely drift backwards or up on top of the flat where I don't want to be these fish are actually great table fare a lot of guys don't like to fish for them because and there's a great cleaning fish right there I mean that if I was taking some fish home today, that'd be one I'd throw in the live well. It's not a giant fish, but that fish, you'll get just as much of a flay off that fish as you will a bluegill. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with a meal of those at all. And again, it's such, an, it's such an easy fish to catch once you find them. You can locate a bunch of them on the on the graph or on a, on a ledge like this. And they'll pretty much eat anything. The only thing I didn't explain is maybe throwing a... Uh, if the bite gets really bad and we didn't have any current and a slick, hot, calm day, you may want to uh, get yourself some 
some minnows and uh, a, just a jig maybe with a white tube body or a paddle tail white paddle tail and uh, you can vertical jig form if the bite gets really bad which I have seen before especially end of July you get into August there's another one into August you get dog days of summer and there's no current haven't had any rain there's another I mean that'd be another one I'd take home and fillet and they're not monster fish. I mean, everybody thinks of stripes and whites and all oh, that they're getting two pound fish and this and that. I'll tell you what, I've got no problem. Since you can keep 30 of these little guys, you can get a good bluegill fillet off those. You have a heck of a meal. Current definitely helps this bite because these fish are pretty much they're they're shad or bait fish oriented kind of like a lot like the largemouth i feel like bait kind of messed up. i think what i'm going to do is switch i'll throw that there it came up i'll throw that in the spoon a little bit <coughs> um, and the current will put the bait fish in specific areas and like here we showed you we're on that little point there's a little cut now if this is just a straight flat bank or a break going down through here a lot of times there's not going to be a lot of fish setting up on it um, now maybe if you get around a brush pile or something you can but then you got your your chances of getting hung up are, are much greater and nobody wants to spend their time hung up so i like to look for these i like to look for these points that uh Here's a bunch of fish again here, right out in the 19 foot of water. I like to look for these little points and cuts and uh, river bends where that current's going to hit it. That's clean. Look for that bait fish and those balls of bait fish and then look for the little bit bigger dots mixed in with them. A lot of times these fish, will uh, they'll look like bait fish down there. The schools of them, they'll get so tight together and grouped up that... But they're very readily eaters. I mean, they it, it, you, you generally get a bait in front of them. It's very, very seldom that they won't bite. That's a good thing about it, too. You can find a school like this, like I say, for kids or something out here that don't know how to cast real well or something. You can just bring them out and, and drop one of the any of these baits right over the side of the boat and just have them hop it up and down off the, off the bottom. And they can catch just as many fish as somebody out here that really knows how to cast and everything else. I tend to catch with the spoon. Again, the spoon doesn't have as much action. The spoon doesn't tend to have as much action as a uh, as your blade bait. So what I'll do when I pop this up off the bottom, and it's been very easy to teach, you know, non-fishermen how to do this. When, when once I once it hits the bottom, I just pop it two, three times on the way up, and it just kind of gives it a shake on the way up. And then as it as it falls, I give it that pop on the way up, and as it's falling, I might just keep the rod tip, hop it once or twice just on the way down, just to give it that flicker. Because unlike the spoon, that or unlike the blade bait that wants to rock all the way down, the spoon will tend to it'll flutter sometimes, depending on on the one you've got it'll flutter. Other ones just kind of want to drop straight down. Um, so what you want to do then is, is try to impart some sort of like dying shad action to it. There are other times when they're eating good enough, you just hop it up off the bottom, they see it go up and they're, they're just waiting for it to fall back to them and they'll eat it. Um, I tend to catch smaller fish on the spoon um, than I do like on the blade bait. The blade bait, I'll catch a lot of more multi-species fish too, bass, catfish, crappies, you know, whatnot. The spoon tends to be more, I tend to catch just more of the white basses, the hybrid stripes, whatever, on, on, on the spoon. And sometimes the smaller fish, and a lot of times I might just start out with that just to see what's down there. Um, if I can get some quick bites, I'll switch over to that blade bait. Sometimes I'll do it the other way around too. You know, I'll start out with that blade bait just see if I can get some real quick active fish that are down there and if there's any size to them. If I'm not getting bit on that, then I, I can tell there's still some fish down there. I'll switch over and, and go to the spoon and 
maybe they just don't want as much action. They just want something that's that does just kind of wiggle a little bit on the way up, got a little couple kicks on the way up, and then just kind of dies on the way back. Rooster tail, that is pretty, it's kind of an in-between bait. It's like throwing the spoon because the body and stuff doesn't really do a whole lot. It's the uh, blade that does all the spinning on it. Um, so that one too, same thing when you pull it up off the bottom, that blade, that blade's spinning. And then when it falls back, that blade doesn't do as much spinning as it just kind of flops back and forth on the way down and gives it a little kick action too. And that, that's basically what you're trying to imitate with all three of these baits is just is a dying bait fish that's fallen back to the bottom or maybe one that's trying to escape a, escape the school. The good thing is it's not like a jig or a worm or something where you're trying to feel the bottom or have to cone it down and, and keep it in a specific strike zone, you know, depth-wise or whatever. Most of these fish are going to be down on the very bottom. There's a whole bunch of them right there, 19 foot of water. Um, you're just trying to basically keep it on the bottom, and you're hopping it off the bottom, and they see it come up and start fluttering back to them. That's that's what they're looking for. That's when they're going to that's when they're going to eat it. 90% of your bites will come as that bait's up like that, falling back to the bottom. You'll get a few that are real active, and they're you know they see that that bait trying to maybe get away from them, and they'll come up and chase it and get it. But most of the time these fish are they're they're waiting for they're waiting for the other fish to do all the work. Oh dang it. They're waiting for all the other fish to do the work and they're just waiting for that bait to come back down and flutter down to the bottom to them. Big thing, keep an eye on your electronics. As I said, sometimes these fish are going to be way up on top, up on top of the flat. Um, sometimes they'll be way out off the break. Maybe you got some bad weather that's come through, the fish are feeling kind of spooked and just want to feel secure, and they'll go and get out in that real deep water. But generally, most of these fish are going to be right on the edge of the break. electronics like I'm coming up right now I'm in 18.2 feet 18.3 and I can see that there's a lot of fish I mean it could be a ball of bait fish but I'm sure there's going to be bass mixed in with them even though that uh, it's bait fish other times you'll be able to tell that it's for sure just bait uh, white bass down there but this whole area right here 18 this that 18 to 19 foot range has just been full of fish See, I just felt a dead pull on that bait, and that's what happened. It just it got wrapped around that trouble hook and just came in sideways. And see some of these bait down here. I'm gonna pitch this thing just down over the side and vertical jig here for a second. got me turned here I started drifting back up on top there's a 16 foot of water there and I'm at 19 up here already and right there's that edge that's what I was looking for just trying to stay on that edge it doesn't feel very big most of these that we've caught out here 
so far today have been yellow bass. And next one I catch, I'll kind of show you. For those of you that haven't fished for them or seen them or whatever, what the difference is. A lot of them can look pretty close to the same. White bass, their, their stripes don't tend to be as prevalent. That You can't see them quite as well. They seem to be a little bit more translucent. The yellows have, the yellows of some of the hybrids will have real defined lines. Against that current, I've not had hardly as many bites as I do casting, casting up towards the end of the point and bringing it back down with the current. That's a big thing, keeping an eye on your electronics if you can. I mean, some of these you can just find some of these brakes if you, need, you know, don't have all electronics and all and anchor up. Get on some of these corners here if you got just a depth finder showing you know what depth you got or whatever just find some of these that you got a real fast break where the current is hitting it like here you know, we've got this point other ones you'll have that inside corner um, some you might have just a hump out in the middle of a river channel or something size fish I wind up I'll catch a few bigger ones on that spoon but that's the size and the thing with these hybrids or hybrids and yellows you see their stripes come all the way back to a real prevalent stripe and then you got that break in their line right there that'll tell you what you wind up catching if you've got a yellow or a hybrid or a, a white bass if we catch a white I'll show you what the translucent and just seem to be a little more white than silver. Those yellows I have a little bit tend to have a, a yellow body to them too. Ah, dang, that one pulled on. That's a nice fish. or whatever over the side of the boat or those that that, that don't fish a lot that you know you don't want to have a bunch of people in the boat casting. I'll do that a lot if I get if I get a guide trip where I've got three or four people with me. You don't want to be doing a lot of casting. Somebody's gonna have a, a lure as an earring or something. And uh, so I'll just pull up on a lot of this stuff and just drop them right over the side of the boat. Absolutely. 
blast all day long. I mean, these things here, they'll give you they'll give you the size of filet that you're going to get off a of bluegill or whatever. And right now, the bluegill aren't that prevalent, easy to catch. Most of them have gone offshore. You can take one of these, fly them out, and get a decent fillet off of them. You can keep 30 of them and have yourself a, a wonderful fish dinner after you're done. I just made a little pitch out here just because we kind of drifted off there and I noticed there's a big wad of, wad of fish on the graph. I just thought I'd try to see if pitch one down there and see if we can get bit. Feels like my bait got messed up. Shouldn't feel, shouldn't feel your your spoon vibrating and I'm going to guess that's, the, that's exactly what happened. It was vibrating because it hooked that caught. I think I'm going to put him away for a minute and I'm going to pick up that uh, I'll try throwing the rooster tail here in a little bit and see what happens. Put some fish right under the boat again. They've been right in that 18 to 19 foot mark on this particular spot. Some spots are going to be deeper, some spots are shallower. But of that blade bait. So you've got the, the blade that'll spin on it. Pretty much the body doesn't do a whole lot. It's probably the least of the three I use. Just for the simple fact that they're really biting well, I go to the, the, spo the uh, blade bait. And if they're not biting real well, I'll pick up that spoon. Catch fish. There's another one. Some people call these their yellow bass. Some call them yellow bellies. Just for the simple fact, boy, he got every hook in his mouth. They kind of got kind of a gold, yellowish color on the on their sides. That's what kind of gives them away. Guys that call them the yellow yellow bellies or yellow bass. This is a, just an easy way to fish. They're prevalent in both lakes, Kentucky. They're prevalent in a lot of lakes, but especially in lakes that have current. Mississippi River, fished for these up in Minnesota when we were, uh, when you had Mississippi River. It's another place that had current and shad. Uh, that's what they're eating on is the bait fish. And just find yourself a, a, a decent current spot, either a, a corner, bend in the river, you got a straightaway like this, something that's got a little point or something sticking off from it, or a little cut in it, and uh, you can vertical jig them up and down right over the side of the boat, or you can uh, do like we're doing here, kind of cast it upstream to the end of a point, let it fall to the bottom, and just pull it up and let it fall back. Pull it up, let it fall back. And I say most most of your bites going to occur on the fall. They're watching that bait, they're watching that bait flee and then all of a sudden it comes fluttering back. They think another fish hit it or killed it or knocked it out. They're just sitting there waiting for an easy meal to come down and they just open their mouth and eat it. don't have to be fancy. There's nothing fancy about what we're doing here. Nothing high-tech at all. Get yourself a couple blade baits, a couple spoons, a couple rooster tails, and you can come out on pretty much any of these river ledges out here and, and catch fish doing this. I 
again, if it gets real, real tough to bite, just go ahead and get yourself some minnows and a jig head and a white body. And just come out here and vertical jig them about a foot off the bottom like you would crappies. absolute ball catching fish all day long. I mean it they don't bite just in the morning. You don't have to have low light conditions or you know any special conditions. These fish are they're ready to eat and it's kind of what they're made to do is just feed. But I hope this gave you some good pointers on maybe a fish that you've never fished for or give you some pointers on catching them a little bit better than, than what maybe you have been. Until next time, tight lines out there on the water. This is Captain Brian Brown with FishingHype.com, Fishing Hype Guide Service.